Hey, what's up, guys? My name is John. Welcome, Daily Theologians. This channel exists to help equip and inspire you to share hope. And today's video is actually a really good one. So you'll want to stick around because there's not that many good stories, but this is one of them. And it will help you connect uh, the Good Shepherd ideology to real life. So you're not going to want to miss this one. So shepherds are really actually very cool people. And I'm not sure the story of this, this guy, but he obviously has experience working with sheep. They're very tough. And this uh, guy is a very, very good picture of Jesus' work for us as the good shepherd. So you're driving along and you see a sheep stuck in barbed wire. And your first reaction is to hop out, pull it out and try to rescue it, right? Well, it was for this guy, and this is a very cool video that is blowing up the internet. How's it blow it? Okay, so he's got his barbed wire here. He's got his horns caught behind the wire. But be careful, because it goes all along here too, everybody. Come on, mate. Now, we'll try and get him over this fence safely. Bit of barbed wire all the way along it. Really beautiful, eh? Okay, buddy. Um, Usually they go into sort of a hypnotized state when you have them like this. Hang on. I'm gonna have to swing him over. Yeah. We can't really carry him that far either. One, two, three. <laughs> You're welcome. So it's so funny. Uh, now, she didn't stop to help him lift over the sheep, but I think it was worth it. And she probably knew that he could lift that sheep up, which looked really heavy. Honestly, the whole thing was amazing how he didn't get cut or tangled. And as I watched it, I thought, wow, that's cool. And then I thought, wow, this is a perfect example of what the Bible teaches in the Old Testament. Now, this is why I hope you stuck around to watch this part. Many people miss this and they don't recognize that God has been a shepherd from the beginning. And we see it all throughout these uh, these types or shadows. Um, Abraham is a shepherd uh, and different people throughout biblical history are shepherds. And obviously Jesus is the antitype, the fulfillment of those. But look at this in Ezekiel 34. God says, for thus says the Lord God, behold, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out as a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered. So I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. Ezekiel cried them dry bones and also cried, I'm the good shepherd, because this is obviously pointing us to what Jesus said and fulfilled in John chapter 10. Number 10, this is one of the coolest chapters in all the Bible. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He was a hired hand and is not a shepherd, does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. The wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. These are I am statements as well, which is pointing to Yahweh and the deity of Christ. I know my own and my own know me. Just as a father knows me, I know the father and I lay my life down for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen. That's talking about Gentiles, not just the Jewish nation. Obviously, this passage in Ezekiel is referencing the Jewish nation 
and then in a sense into the future, the Gentiles here in John 10. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. Notice Jesus has authority over death here as well. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. Jesus was not a victim. It was part of his redemptive plan. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my father. He also says no one will snatch these sheep from his hand because no one is greater than he and the, and the father and he holds them. So you can't lose your salvation either. That's John 6, John 10. But this, this image of Jesus being a shepherd, I mean, this guy, assumably he was an Australian. Good day there, mate. Uh, was like the perfect guy for this. And he reminded me of kind of like a Mick Dundee, like just walking along and he sees this sheep. I would have I would have had my head stuck in the barbed wire. I would have gotten stuck if I tried to help that sheep. But that's why shepherds are so cool. And in spiritually, this is a perfect picture of what Jesus does. We are stuck in the barbed wire, except biblically we're, we're dead in the barbed wire. And Jesus comes along and rescues us. That's why he said, I'm the good shepherd. Sheep are not intelligent. As he said, that goes into like a, a catatonic state. If you turn it a certain way, they don't think well. Uh, we're not we're not uh, good at defending ourselves. None of these things. And that's why we need the shepherd. And the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He protects the sheep from the wolf. And remember, your pastor is an under shepherd. If, you're, if your pastor isn't protecting the sheep, feeding the sheep, and equipping the sheep, you need to find a new church that preaches the Bible clearly, expositionally, preferably not uh, topical. Hopefully, uh, exposition is when you go through the chapters book by book so that the Bible speaks and, and the uh, Holy Spirit's intended meaning is the actual preached text. Um, that is the correct interpretation of scripture. It's the right way to do uh, exegesis and um, and then uh, preach. Um, but the core focus always needs to be on the death, burial, and resurrection of the God-man, Jesus Christ, who laid down his life for the sheep, took it up again, and you must repent and believe the gospel because there is coming a day where God will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom he has appointed, the God-man, Jesus Christ, who is the just judge of all the earth. Check out Revelation 19. Check out Matthew 24. The day of God's judgment is coming, and there's a very sad place called hell. On the cross, Jesus bore the hell we deserve, thus fulfilling the law in his perfect life, which is called his active obedience, and then paying the infinite hell debt that we owe on the cross, dying and rising. But you must repent and believe, or you will face God's righteous wrath and judgment. So make today the day of salvation, Acts 4.12. And uh, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's appointed for men to die once, and then comes judgment. But there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ because Jesus did what the wall weakened by the flesh couldn't do. He canceled the calligrapher, the handwriting of death that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross, which is all good news. Check it out for yourself. Read John 3, read John 10, read John 6, read Romans 8, read Romans 9. Just read the whole enchilada. There's only 260 chapters in the New Testament. You can do it. And if you're still watching this, please remember to hammer that like button. <laughs> like the 95 theses. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to channel trying to reach 10 billion people. God bless.